welcome to Burning Up Apps. I'm your host, Vale Chikuni. We begin. Uh, I want to ask y'all this. A lot of y'all talk about faith. I know a lot of y'all on this panel, all of y'all are believers. How important is it to marry a Christian? I want to ask you that, Carrie. <laughs> So, well, the, of course, we all know that the Bible says to be equally yoked, right? But it's not just important to marry a Christian who professes it with their mouth, but doesn't believe it in their heart. And I think what I have found is that it's a lot of people that tell you they love God, but they lying, dusty, trifling. Do you have cheating, lying, ashy? Just broke. No, and they ashy. Ashy and lying. Broke At least if you don't lie, don't be ashy. Ashy and lying. No, I'm teasing, but it's true. So, to just have a person who says that they believe God, not a perfect person, but truly a person who has integrity and who is really trying to walk this thing out the best way that they can. It doesn't impress me that you know scripture. Can you live by what you profess? Boom. Boom. That part. Can, I, can I add to that? I, I really want to add to that because like, again, I, I was saying too, I want to, a man who really has a relationship with Christ, but you have to re be really careful. I, my mom, when she married my father, she met my father in ministry, and but my father was struggling. He had inner struggles, and he struggled with drug addiction, you know what I mean? And so it doesn't mean that he wasn't godly, but he wasn't really applying, you know, what he was standing on the pulpit and preaching every Sunday. He wasn't applying that to his own life. But then fast forward, even like last year, I met someone who was a pastor, and literally this man was pastoring and went from Huntsville to Atlanta to LA, and literally, like, I thought this man was a man of God, and come to find out, this man was going around and swindling so many women in the church, like, sleeping with the women in the church, sleeping with the men in the church, taking their money, like, and using God to do it. And so, again, it's like, it's really, really hard, because you want someone who is authentic in their walk with Christ, but so many of us, when we see someone quoting scripture, especially as women, we get so excited. Oh my God, he knows Psalm 23. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody knows Psalm 23, girl. Everybody. You know what I mean? So, but at the same time, you know, why he, he, he really walking in them valleys, though. Like, literally. And he's trying to walk you into one. And so you really have Death to be valley. careful. Like, you really have to be careful. Like, you have to be careful um, with these men or and women when it comes to Christ. People play with God so, so much. They really, yes, really do. And we're living in a time where it's at an all-time high, especially with social media. People are monetizing Christ left yes, and right. Yes, they don't yes. really believe. And so you really have to have discernment. Yes. Ladies especially have discernment when it comes to these men who are throwing around the name of God. I'm good. Amen. Listen, I'm good. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... All right. <clears throat> Before she even continues, okay? All these people, do, do, do you hear what she said? Like destiny, Jesse, right? She says you need to have, uh, you need to be looking for, uh, a man has to be godly. Okay? So the men that you met, according to her own testimony, right? She met this guy, going out with this guy, and this guy is out there preaching all over the place. So in her mind, she thought that guy was godly, only to find out that uh, this man is swindling people in the church, sleeping with everybody left and right. According to her own testimony, her father was, uh, was godly, but the father was, uh, was uh, you know, uh, he struggled with addiction, okay? So to be honest, okay, can a Christian sin? Yes, you can sin. But you cannot be in a perpetual sin as a Christian, okay? Just because people are preaching out there, that doesn't mean that they are Christians. So the criteria that they are using to think that somebody is godly for this relationship is very, very unbiblical. No wonder they are finding themselves in this relationship because they just meet a guy who tells them like, okay, I'm a Christian, but the person is not a Christian. Okay, so, you know, uh, the question was like, what are you looking for, right? So we, you know, the first lady, uh, what she said was actually true, okay? The uh, first lady, like, okay, you need a man who shouldn't be, you should not be, uh, um, should not be unequally yoked, right? The scripture talks about that. So meaning, as believers, you're going to be dating believers. So if Jesse, she's a believer out here, what was she doing with the man who is out here swindling people? Guys, if you're a Christian, okay, it is possible somebody can fool you. But sooner or later, you're going to know, like, okay, this guy is not for real. This guy is not for real. Why? Because you are a genuine believer, okay? You are authentic. You know what it means to be walking with Christ. You'll be able to know. They can fool you, a little, you know, one or two or three days, but you'll be able to find out. It shouldn't be so hard. You want a man who fears God. You want a man who works God. You want a man who, who wants to do what is right. You want a man who is not corrupt. Okay, you want a man who is not corrupt. You want a man who has a good, godly character. This is not so hard to find 
especially when you're out here, you're dating. But these people, they are, they are too, the things they're looking for are too worldly than biblical. So it's, it's understandable for them to find themselves in this situation. <laughs> You got something in your heart. Just go ahead and say it. Well, you said Psalm 23. It was engraved inside of my wedding ring. And it, it was not applied at all. So that's how far it goes. Mm. With some men, they, they really, they speak it. And I've actually had experiences where there will be something that may have been a post from a, a person, but it was directed towards something they did to me negative. Thank God I'm a winner. But it's, I won in court because I'm fighting you for custody. That type of thing. Yeah. Is it important for you to have uh, a man of God? That's why I like saying Christians. I like saying women of God and men of God. It's, important to have a man of God, not just a, a Christian, a man of God that really walks it. And when you are in a, a space where you need to be corrected, that's what a, a real Christian is. So when you're in a relationship and you have certain things that you're going through, if you can't be corrected and be directed back to God, then you're not for me. Let me tell you something. Can I? That, 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 that's extremely important. I'm going to let you chime in, Stacey. Uh, what's so important about that where it was an episode that I did and while I was talking to the guest, I heard the sound of a woman of God and I started crying. She said, what, 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 she said, what's going on? I said, I will not compromise having a woman of God. And the reason why I said that is because I've come in contact with a lot of Christian women, but a woman of God, she vibrates on a different level, on a different frequency. And what I mean by that is when you get a woman of God, she can answer the unspoken. She knows how to see in you when you can't even articulate what you see in yourself. Okay. She's able to lay before the Lord and intercede. See, my mom was a woman of God. She would literally anoint my pillow. And I, I used to think God was snitching on me all the time because she would always come and be like, I know what you're doing. I'd be like, what, what, what? She said, what happens in the dark comes to the light. I'd be like, oh my God, God is over snitching on me. And so I recognized that she had a prayer life that she would be able to see me on levels that no one else could see me. And so that's what I desire as a wife. And I'm glad that there's a distinction between a Christian and a woman of God or a man of God because a Christian, you can just say the sinner's prayer and you become a Christian. But when you start walking that thing out on a daily basis is when you get into covenant and communion with God where you become a man or woman of God. Stacey. <laughs> okay, so once again, she's not gonna he's not gonna find that. Okay? Because what he's articulating, you're not gonna find that in the scripture, okay? This is some new age stuff. So they are looking for a woman who is going to be vibrating on a certain frequency. Where are you going to find that? Okay, if, unless you're looking for a witch who's going to be vibrating at a certain frequency, fine, have at it, okay? Guys, I don't know why they're making it so difficult, okay? We have examples in the scripture. Proverbs 31, okay? You're looking for a godly woman with a good godly character, okay? You're not looking for a woman who's boastful. You're not looking a woman who uh, who's looking like a hushy mama, okay? You're looking a woman who, who dresses modestly. You're looking for a woman who loves the Lord, okay? Who knows the word of God on his own. Who is pursuing God? That's what you're looking for. We're looking for Titus 2, woman over here. You're looking for a woman who's going to manage your home, who is going to take care of, uh, of your children, who is going to support you, who is going to be your helper. That's what you're looking for. So if he's out here, by the way, he's also single himself. He's been divorced according to his own testimony. He's the one who actually initiated the divorce. So he's the one who left his wife. Okay, and people have asked him, oh, so why don't you go back to, uh, to, you, to your wife? He said, oh, no, I don't want to go back to, to my wife. But he's out here as a relationship guru and he's out here as a Christian. So why can't you just practice the, the wisdom that you're giving to these other people? Huh? I very much doubt if these people, like, yes, they divorced. I doubt if it was a biblical, um, uh, a biblical reason to divorce. God has divorced. Okay, we want people to reconcile, we want people to come together. The other thing that he shared, right? Uh, his mom used to pray and everything. Beautiful. We have no problem with that issue, okay? So, uh, it is true. Men are going to learn what a woman is from their mothers. So, the question is, what type of mom did you have? There are things that you can learn from your mom, absolutely, right? But when you're out here, what if your mom wasn't godly? Okay, so you're going to be influenced by culture for sure. Those are the things, right? But your, your priority is to look to the scriptures. So whatever your mama taught you, if it composed to the scriptures, go for that issue. Absolutely. Whatever your mama taught you, like, ah, this does not conform to the scripture. You don't have to hold on to it simply because it was your mom who taught you. Okay, the scripture is sufficient. We go by the scripture. I want to speak to character, though. Let's character is so important. We forget that, honestly, God has character. Yes. Right? So when you're dating, 
dating out there, I would suggest, like, look at the man's character because if you're not looking at integrity, mm. integrity does not show up visually. Yeah. You have to habitually see integrity for integrity to be there. Yeah. If you want someone who's consistent, that consistency is shown in his life separate and individual of however your mama loves you because you're so wonderful. But that consistency is there because of the man that he is. If he's sitting up there talking about, well, you know, I told my daughter that I was going to do so-and-so, but you know what? I'm tired. I don't feel like doing this. You should be like, hold on. Yeah. Wait, what did he? Yeah. And you should, but you don't question it. You just let him show you who he is. Right. Oh, okay. You're not going to do it. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, go to sleep then. That man has no integrity. He's not a man of his word. So I say with the character of a man and knowing that it's just not the word that he is speaking out of the Bible, how is he living his life? And women, men dating equally. How is she living her life yeah. on a daily basis? Separate and individual of you. Yeah. That's facts. Good. Big facts. As a man... It's mandatory. Like, I've, I literally stopped dating somebody after about the second or third date because she mentioned she was an atheist. And I was like, well, yeah, uh, cancel the appetizers. <laughs> the appetizers? Yeah, we don't even need to eat together no more. Hey, I can't learn nothing from you. You can't hold me accountable. You, we are not the same. Oh, oh, you said hold you accountable. Right. I need to unpack that. What you mean by she can't hold you accountable? If, if, put it like this, a woman of faith, a woman of God, if I'm filming in Amsterdam or I'm in Toronto or I'm in Atlanta or I'm in LA, my woman is still my woman. And she's going to move like I'm right there in the room next to her because I'm going to move like she's right yes, here next sir. to me. Yes, sir. A woman of faith is going to operate honorably yeah. and, and, and out of loyal, out of loyalty. So I don't have to worry about that. That's not a thing. If she don't believe in nothing or she occasionally believe, or on Easter <laughs> with that good outfit and the good hat, the big hat that's blocking everybody's view, if that's what she believes, I don't need that at home. Yeah. I need, like, I, I got to be able to pray with you and for you and know that you're covering me when I'm gone, when I'm traveling on this flight and that flight on this big movie or this pitch deal or we trying to sell this show and that film, I, I need your covering. Mm. I, can, I can't, as a man, I'm not always the strong one. So I got to be able to lay some of this stuff down in front of you and you not judge me when I'm cracking. You get some super glue and help me put back together. Okay. A woman of God do that. When I say I love Okay, y'all. <laughs> so, once again, they, uh, we have Stacey. We'll get back to Christine, right? Stacey, she's saying, like, okay, when she goes out there, she's looking for character, character, character. Guys, there are Muslim men out there who actually do have good character. What are you going to do? Huh? What are you going to do? There are Buddhist men out there who actually do have good character. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So are you going to date that man because he has a good character? Huh? So the standard that they are using, it's, it's, um, it's not enough. Okay, you need a man who has a good God, a character. Just saying like, okay, he has a character. That's not going to cut it. That's just not going to cut it. Okay, no wonder they found themselves in this situation. Not only that, uh, you know, she went on just like, okay, you know, I want to see what he's doing. Okay, but what are you doing? So they're out here just investigating to see what these men are doing or not doing. But what about you? What about you? What, what does it say about you? What is your character? Not only that, it's simple. Like men, women, you're looking for a man who is going to be, who is, who is willing to sacrifice his life for you. You're looking for a man who, who is pursuing Jesus, who is exo um, uh, showing Christ-like character. Okay, because we are to conform to the image of Christ. So you need a man who is willing to do that. You need a man who is willing to lay his life for you. You need a man who is willing to provide for you. You need a man who is willing to protect you. Those are the character traits that you should be looking for. Okay, it's not so hard to find it because there are men out there. They're just out here. They just want to have a good time. That's it. They're not, they, they are not even interested to settle down, to, uh, to have a family, to manage a family. They just don't have time for that issue, okay? So you need to have these things. So when you go out there, like it's so simple, like, okay, you know, uh, we're not talking about sinners perfection over here. They're going to be the sinners, but what are they doing in their life, okay? You need a man who has a job, okay? He got to have a J-O-B, <laughs> okay? Okay? Yeah, he shouldn't be lazy, a hard worker. He needs to have a job. So then uh, Kristen over here said like, oh, okay, I'm looking, some, uh, you know, I'm weak and everything. I need a, a woman who's going to be covering. You are in charge of worship in your home, okay? Fine. Your, your wife can pray for you, but you are the one who's leading in that, particular, in that department. Again, his thing is most, his priority is I'm having these projects. I'm doing these things. So I want a woman who's going to come alongside me and just go sign these things. Okay. If those projects are superseding your family, then you got it backwards. 
your family is your priority, then you can go and, and do those projects. If those projects are getting in the way of your wife, because your wife is your priority, then there's a problem. There's a problem out there. So these men, and even these women, right, their priority is their career. Whatever they're doing is their priority. They just want a man as an add-on, a woman as an add-on. So watch whenever they're talking about this thing, just like, okay, no wonder you're out here like you're single. You need to, uh, you know, make some adjustment, real big adjustment. I love, that. I love the vulnerability where you said when I don't always have it together because as men that's the biggest lie that we've been sold. We've been sold that from fathers if they were present or even just society that we can't cry, we can't hurt, we can't be vulnerable. We always have to have it together and just what you said to have a woman that can cover you as you're covering her. That's extremely important. Alright guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like this video. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, remember to be in the now. Thank you.